so I'm out here in my garden today and I thought it would be a good day to take you through a garden update of where we are. It's May 17th, so you can kind of see how we are about mid-May, mid getting into spring, getting things planted, and cleaning things up from last year. We have some potato towers that we started a few weeks ago that we can do an update on. And I've got my raised beds and my greenhouse and we I also still have some plant starts going we're also doing some experimenting with planting in our forest and so that might be interesting to some people to kind of follow along with that and see how that works maybe it will work for you next year we're, we're trying a few different vegetables out there mostly squash but also some cucumbers and I have some kohlrabi kind of in a shady plate plate place shady place over there so we'll see how they do and and take you along with us to check it all out so let's get started i thought i'd start here at the potato tower since that seems to be something that a lot of people are interested in i'm really happy to be able to show you what we've done and take you along to see if this works out well for us i think it might work because i'm already and it's only been a few weeks starting to see potato blossom well not blossoms but potato growth so there's green sprouts coming out the side so let's see what that looks like so down here you can see we've already got some potatoes growing out there's another one right here it's been raining so i think that's helped a lot i noticed one over here as well somewhere earlier but anyway i'm i'm thinking that this so far is looking pretty good one thing i do think that i might do there's another one right there is come back in and put a little bit more soil around the edges in places you can see something coming out here and also right there but i think i'm going to come in and put a little bit more soil pack it in as as the season goes on because i'm noticing that it kind of runs out a little bit and also it's sinking so once i get some sprouts up here on top then i'm going to add more straw just to keep the light off of things and also give it a little bit more to kind of process down there because if you've seen our other video you'll notice that it it's, it has sunk quite a substantial amount. I think I got it up to about here and it's already sunk that far. So I want to make sure it, it has enough to go on in here. But this is exciting. I'm, I'm very pleased so far. This is my greenhouse. This is the first year we're really starting to grow in this greenhouse. It's kind of been, to be honest, quite a waste for the first year. Um, and it was really difficult for us to set up. We struggled with it. The doors still don't really close. We've had problems with getting it sealed for temperature enough. But this year I decided, you know, I'm just going to grow some summer stuff in here. Some things that like it really hot. And so far that's working pretty well. We'll see if we have problems with fruiting or with anything like that or if it just gets too hot in here. But we are in the Pacific Northwest here. I'm in zone 8B, I think. 8A, 8B, 8B, I think. I'll, I'll have Brian put a little thing that says 8B or whatever it is. <laughs> it's pretty temperate and we have not too cold of a winter and not too hot of a summer. So I think this will work, but we're learning and experimenting here because what I found with gardening is that nothing works the same for anybody because everybody's property is a little different, even if they are in the same place. I, I have friends who garden in their yard and things that grow for them don't grow for me and don't do well, even if I do exactly like they do. Things are always different and you just have to find what works for you. So let, let's talk about what I've got going on in here. One thing I have is this avocado tree, which is over here in the corner. And so this tree is something that originally I had outside 
and it would really die back hard in the winter time and then would slowly come back in the summer and so this year I put it in the greenhouse just to kind of see how it would do and we watered it through the winter and it was the lone plant in here and it gets weeds now it seems to be doing so much better because I've never had green leaves on it this time of year and things like that so I'm really excited to see if I actually get an avocado out of this thing even one avocado would just make me thrilled tiny avocado fine I don't care just an avocado so I've got that in here and then I have a whole bunch of just potted up peppers sweet and hot so so those have just been sitting in here kind of being out of the elements a little bit. It's still been a little cold sometimes, especially in the evenings and we have some heavy rain showers. I do have some peppers out there, but I'm really curious to see how late I should plant them. So I'm keeping some back and putting some in and kind of playing with that. So we'll see. And I also need some more space to put these things in. Other things that I have going back in here. So I have some more pepper plants that these will stay in the greenhouse, these pots in this, on the side. I'm trying to maximize the space a bit. So I, I'm looking at ways I can do that. And then all along the sides, I have tomatoes that I started indoors in my little greenhouse area inside with heat mats. I'll show you that later probably around early March, late February even. And so these have been growing for a good long time and I put them in maybe a month ago out here. And I've already got bloom setting and th things are looking really good for, for these. So I'm hopeful that, that I will actually get some tomatoes early on this time because last year, my tomatoes didn't set until the very end of summer, right around mid-August, I want to say. And so I didn't get as many tomatoes as I would like to get. So I'm hopeful that this year that will be different. I've also got in the very back of the greenhouse, I've got some eggplants. And my eggplants are already starting to set. Yay! So let's look at those. Okay, so now we're at the back of the greenhouse and I'm crowded in here behind all the stuff because there's so much stuff in this greenhouse right now. I've been setting up these lights. So um, it's kind of taking taking the greenhouse over right now. This All this junk is in here. So um, bear with me. But I wanted to show you that I have these beautiful little blossoms already on my eggplant and I'm so excited. I love, love, love eggplant. It's so yummy. And I'm really excited to start getting eggplants that don't take me all season and then I get two fruits per plant because that's just discouraging <laughs> because usually they're like this big too. So uh, I'm really excited about having these guys in the greenhouse now and hopefully they'll do really well for us. Also, this is a Narangilla, I think it's called. Got the tag here. It's Narangilla orange. And it's a fruiting plant. It's very spiky. See, can you see the spikes on there? And I didn't realize that <laughs> until it bit me. So um, I'm curious to see what this has done. Have you guys grown this plant before? Let me know because I'm, I'm really curious about it. So, so that's my greenhouse and what's going on in it. We've got a little, couple little flowers and things that I'm planting in here just to see if I can't get pollinators to come in here. We do have windows up there and they don't really seal very well. <laughs> so, so maybe that will help bring some pollinators in. I do get a lot of box elder bugs that come in here and just drive me bananas, but maybe they're helping to pollinate and I should just leave them alone. I don't know. Yeah, so that's what's going on in our greenhouse. This is just a quick overview of the whole garden, so you can kind of see it. So back over here are our compost bins, and then there's this open space here that I'll talk about in a minute. 
and our greenhouse and we have a few beds over here that we're planning to change eventually and then we have our rose bushes and then brian built me a few years ago these awesome raised beds and we've got cattle panel trellises and last year he built me these pillars to hang lights and flowers on they're just beautiful the flowers are just starting to kind of get going i planted in them this year so it's taking them a little longer than buying them at the grocery store and then we've got the, these whole set of beds and then over here we have our sort of like mini orchard so we have our apple tree and some pear trees and then if i swing across the driveway then we have another pear tree over here this one actually is interesting because it produces several varieties of fruit so it's one of those weird little grafted trees so this year we're we're letting it set fruit it's it's done pretty well so um yeah we're excited to have pears that will be exciting Okay, I think I'll just go bed to bed and tell you what's going on in there. So all these little flower box beds on the corners here are basically just gonna grow some flowers. Um, I have, it's a little shady over here. It only gets light on the ends of the days and the beginnings of the days mostly. So it tends to get a lot of cover from all the trees around us. So I did plant more of a shade mix this year just to see how it will do, but I've had success with other things in there as well. So this bed gets the least amount of sun in my garden. And so I have some bunching onions that I planted early in the spring and some Swiss chard that we've had in here for several years that has finally decided that it's done and so it's I've been pulling it out as it kind of bolts but we've eaten off of that so many meals now it's crazy and so we've got our spinach and that and then I did plant some greens in there just yesterday and I'm kind of looking at them to see how they're doing they're a little struggling right now it looks like so so yeah that's that's the first bed and then along the back I've been trying to plant beans and the slugs have been so bad this year and this bed just gets killed with slugs I, I might have to wait a little longer and replant that just because the slugs when it's off and on raining they do it they really kill everything so this bed has kind of a mix of things because it it's a little bit more like this other bed over here where it gets a little less sun, especially in this corner. So I've got, again, my chard that's bolting. And then I've got some peppers and a eggplant here because it does get a little bit more sun as the summer progresses. So I thought I'd experiment and plant those in there. I have a few little flowers that are planted everywhere. So those are starting to pop up. This is Celtus. So I've got this in a few places. It's just kind of interesting to me. Uh, I'm kind of curious how that will do. Brian doesn't eat salad really. So <laughs> usually I buy, I get vegetables that we could cook because Brian likes things cooked. We'll see how they do. And maybe I'll have some salads every now and then from those. And more flowers in there. And then these are spinaches. And I have some yellow zucchinis in here that are looking like they're starting to do good they're perking up i i put some things in a little early and they didn't do so well so those are looking much better and then this is broccolis and cabbages and some turnip greens so the turnip greens are kind of interspersed in here and now that things are starting to get bigger, I'll pull some of those out and we'll have a big batch of turnips. I, I like kind of giving things less room in the beginning and then pulling things out as they get, get ready to eat and giving the rest room to grow. So the cabbages will have all this room once the other stuff is done because the cabbages will take longer. And since I have a pretty mild growing season, like I said earlier, we'll, we'll have cabbages in here just fine even in the summertime so so then moving to the back this bed has a lot of my nice leafy greens that I use for soups and stir fries and things like that so these bok choys are looking just beautiful right now and 
I may actually harvest one pretty quickly here for dinner. And then I have a whole bunch of kales in here. And these are some more of those Swiss chards that can be pulled down pretty soon. And then on the end, I've got some hot peppers. And so as those will be fine once I pull these Swiss chards out, but then as some of these greens come out, these peppers will take over the pole bed. So it's again my kind of rotating my crops. This is all garlic in these two square beds. Then I have beets and beans and some eggplants and a few peppers again. I think those are sweet peppers. Middle buds have garlic. And then I have, this is a pickle. So this is a national pickling cucumber that will go up the trellis. So on the trellises, I try to keep things that will vine up the trellis. And then I have beans all along here. And then in between, I grow some, kind of like this one's a winter keeper squash. So just winter, winter squashes in general. And then I threw in this pepper here just because I had it out and I ran out of spots. <laughs> so we'll see how it does in there. And then in this bed, we've got some more winter squashes. And then I believe on the end, I put some summer squash type things. Let's see if I can find a tag to any of these. Nope, they're all winter squashes. And then I need to replant in here maybe some beans or something like that to grow up the trellis. I keep having problems with this bed. If things die. I, I'm not sure what's going on with it, but they're only dying along the edges. So I, I, it must be what I'm planting, not what's in there. Then this last bed has more cucumber pickles along this wall, and those will grow up and be beautiful. And then I have some zucchini summer squash. So this is like a gray zucchini. It's already starting to set its fruit, yay. And another yellow zucchini, and then I have some patty pans back here. Oh, this is another gray zucchini, it looks like. Some of these are patty pans. Yeah, that one is and then i've got more squashes and this bed gets a little bit more light so i put some of the the eggplants in there they'll be a little crowded but they're going to go up and these guys are going to go down so we'll see how it works and this bed is a big mess right now because i had broccoli rob in here and he just ended up not liking it very well. I've had it at Chinese restaurants and really liked it, but mine, for some reason, it was very woody. And so I'm not sure what's going on with that, but I, I need to get in here and pull it all up. And I had a spare tomato. <laughs> and so I just threw it in there because it was setting fruit and starting to die. So I threw it in there knowing I was gonna plant some more things like that in there. Cause I'm gonna put probably leftover peppers and and tomatoes in this bed once it's got all the green stuff out of it. I have some more turnips and rutabagas and things like that that can come out really soon. So this bed is due for a big transformation soon. You can see I've already got two peppers in there. This is a cauliflower or a broccoli, I think. So that's gonna be beautiful. And yeah, so this bed has already been really productive for us. We've been eating off of it for about a month. And now things are starting to go to seed. You can see this is bok choy. It's gone to seed. Some of these I had pulled leaves off of it as it started to go and kind of threw those in with some that looked better. So nothing goes to waste. All that excess will go to chickens, to goats, to bunnies. Um, as I pull things out and then anything that can't go to them, it goes over there to the compost bins. So this is our cabbage and kohlrabi bed right now. Some cab kohlrabis I planted recently got really badly attacked by slugs because we just had some rainy nights and the slugs just were really out and I couldn't put down the iron phosphate for them like I normally do because it was just washing out. So the slugs really got those bad, but you can see I've got some beautiful kohlrabis down there. That one's just gorgeous and ready to pick. So 
So we might have that for dinner too. And then now I'm back at the back. And one thing I forgot to mention when I was over here is look at my peas. <laughs> my peas look so good. So I'm excited to vote our peas this year. I, I do shelling peas. And then what I'd like to do is be able to plant enough of them that I can shell them and put them in the freezer because we eat peas and everything. They just get stuffed into stuff. A lot of times when I make pastas or anything with a cream sauce, it's got to have peas in it. Macaroni and cheese will throw peas in it. Lots of things. So back to this bed. I've got some tomatillas in here. I only planted a couple because tomatillas will just take over. So I've got one, two, three, four in here, and that will be plenty. I planted a whole bed of them once and it was just ridiculous. <laughs> we had tomatillos for forever. And then we've got some more peppers. These are paprika peppers and hot peppers, like cayennes and things like that. And then I have another squash in here. This is a butternut squash, so I figure it'll just kind of snake around wherever it wants. And this is a roselle that's in there so i had some extras and they are really suffering due to my mistreatment of them <laughs> they are not looking so hot so i might have to try replanting i i'm not sure how well i'm going to do with those anyways though because it's it's not ideal conditions for them here i think so we'll see okay so this is the back garden and then I have my, we call it the long bed back here. Those are my blueberries. We have one big bush that's been here since we bought the property. And then last year we got another one and planted that, that this spring. It's looking pretty good. And so this is junk right now. This, this whole bed is really junky. Um, we've been pulling weeds out of it and feeding it to chickens and just kind of slowly getting rid of things. I have some arugula that I'm just letting go to seed and then just other things that didn't do well when I planted it last year. I planted it in the fall and it did terrible. It just doesn't get enough light back here in the winter time. So what I am going to do is plant some what am I going to plant? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to plant some asparagus back in this bed and hopefully have the whole bed be asparagus because I think that would be really nice. And then coming along back to this side of the property, this area behind the blueberries and next to the greenhouse is kind of just a junk area right now. But we what we want to do next year is create a big strawberry area and have a nice strawberry patch in here and so hopefully that will get done next year but I do do some of my potting back here and transitioning and things like that I leave things out so they can acclimate to being back here in the garden and then we've got these three beds this was our strawberry bed and it it does okay but it's been slowly slowly just getting worse and falling apart more each year and i think the strawberries have really taken a toll because of that so you can see they're doing better on that end than this end for sure we need to tear all these beds out and redo things so but we don't have time this year so that's gonna have to wait so i'm not really doing much with this unfortunately it's just wasting space right now because the soil's not great. It really needs to be abended. We don't have any soil to put into it. And we've got our compost area that we have these pretty little roses growing up. And then we come to this area. And Brian has recently cleaned out a lot of the ugly shrubs and things that were over here. And you now it's a lot more just barren ground. So I didn't actually film myself taking out any of these bushes, but I saved them for the goats to eat. For some reason it takes them quite a while to eat these bushes.
sometimes just sometimes just moving them around a little makes them makes them think it's a new treat I think we didn't really have a use for those other bushes and shrubs that we fed the goats just no place around the yard that we wanted to put them but I really like this tree I call it my dr. Seuss tree because of the twisty shape so I very carefully dug out as many of the roots as I could and put it over here closer to the road. I think it'll be nice here. We have this beautiful magnolia tree in it in here. Do I still want to trim back a little bit? There's, there's a little bit more light down here. But what I'm going to be doing is putting in more of an in-ground vegetable garden in this space. And so I'm hoping this works and then we can keep reusing it. Otherwise, we'll build more raised beds. So, so that's the plan for this area. And then I have some artichokes over here that are doing pretty well. They're kind of getting crowded by the roses a little bit, but that happens every year. We'll prune those back in a while. And then these are okras that are frankly frankly kind of struggling a little. I didn't really amend their soil very much and they're 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 looking a little sad. It's been a little cold for them too, so that's that's just how it goes. So I thought I'd show you what we have been doing for potatoes. Right now we've been using these potato grow bags and they do work pretty well. You can see we've got a lot of growth on them. These were planted around February maybe March so they're doing really well we just don't have a lot of potatoes that come out of these bags and they do take up a lot of space so for a couple pounds of potatoes it's a lot of space but they do look pretty good so they're nice and healthy in here for the most part I, I do need to come in and put straw on them and some things so but they do pretty good and then this is where I start my seeds. So let's go in there and look at that. Okay, so this is my crazy seed starting area. What, what I have is this, when we bought this house from, from Brian's uncle, it already had this kind of like window greenhouse is what we've been calling it. And it didn't have lights in it and it didn't have grow mats, so these heated mats. So those things I added. But otherwise, the shelves were here, everything was here. So this has been really, really nice. Uh, I just put, put a f not very much money into doing this. And then I just start my seeds in these little peat pellet pots. And, and if I've got things that I wanna grow up, these are some artichokes, then I pot them up but otherwise, I really like using these things. They're pretty easy. The only thing that I've learned that kind of helps a lot with them is that I pull these mesh bags off of them. So if you've ever used them and had bad luck with them drying out or something like that, it's probably because of these little mesh bags. The roots just have trouble getting out of it and it doesn't work very well, So, but it starts them really well. So I, I like those for starting. They're just really easy. They're not the cheapest thing, but they're really easy. So it's a lot more about being foolproof sometimes with me than anything. And then when we started to expand, I added this rack. So this rack helps kind of keep me from, from going crazy because when I was having things in here, I could only fit these small things and I could never pot up until I had to go outside so I was always frustrated. Now I have room to do my pot up potting and things work really well. These tomatoes are my second round of tomatoes and they definitely are ready to be potted up. Yeah, and my basil's looking awesome. The only reason I've got this basil in here is that it had been kind of on the chilly side so I brought it in but I should bring it outside. Okay, so we're back outside. You see, I brought the basil out. Yay me. <laughs> um, but this area is a little bit of a catch-all this time of year because I've got some flowers and things going on to make this area look pretty, but then I've messed it all up by doing all my potting and things like that out here. This is our little 
fish pond. Right now it's a little mucky and needs to be cleaned out, but it, the edge of it kind of serves as a place for me to put things that are transitioning to the outdoors. I've got trays of things that are really old that need to be cleaned up, just old, old things. <laughs> and then things that are getting ready to go out and then our washing station turns into the giant mess of a potting station until I get it all cleaned up later so it kind of becomes a mess and then we have our little trellis with our clematis on it which is really beautiful this time of year I'm doing some experimenting with this tub and growing some cucumbers up a little trellis that I built and then on the inside is just another squash thing and it's probably going to die because it's going to get shaded out but i thought it would be fun and then i've got some peppers in here some mint and brian has a whole bunch of rocks right here that that needs work on and then yesterday i was weeding all this out and this needs to go to chickens we have some kind of parsley that's been ranging out of its location out here i've never heard of parsley doing this but it's crazy right here but our parsley is growing all over out here and so i've been pulling some of that and this is the area where I've got, I've got a few peppers in here. I, I know it's dark and they're not going to grow, but I thought it would be fun. I like the foliage on this one. But then a lot of what I'm putting in here are little new kohlrabi starts. And so I've got some of those in there. And then we've got our flowers and things like that. But now we're getting into my experimental areas. <laughs> so we have... If you've seen on the videos, the intros, a lot of the times Brian will come back here to shoot those intros. And our landscape is kind of like a cliff. It's very wooded, it's very pretty, but it does get dark for large parts of the day. And so it's not ideal for growing anything other than ivy. So what we've been doing is I go back here a few times a day and look for places where there's a little more light. In those places, I've started planting different plants. And so this is some cucumbers that are not doing very well. I don't think they're gonna survive. So that experiment with this one failed. I do have somewhere in here, maybe it's a couple steps down. Here we go. I've planted these squashes. There's two of them. There's one right here. And I'm hoping to see if the squashes will thrive down here because they just seem similar to some of the things that grow down here. So I, I'm seeing how it works. We'll see. They may never flower. There's another squash. It's doing pretty okay but as we get over to the other side they get they start to get a little bit more light so you can see this one's a lot bigger and it's actually got some flowers on it and then up there where I've got those two trellises I have some cucumbers that are doing great they're they're just at the same level as the other ones so I'm really excited about that I'm trying not to fall here <laughs> I have a hard time getting down here. Brain is a mountain goat. I can climb down here. There's another squash. And I'm thinking of coming down to this little bit sunny area here and doing some things as well. But I have a lot of things that are growing up by the hedge there. And those are all doing really well. So as long as we can keep this ivy back, then we should be able to grow some things up there i think and they get a lot of morning light which is good so so that's kind of what we're looking for down here is to get things with morning light right now it's late afternoon sun's gone out gone the other way it's not so much light it's nice and cool down here though um the other thing we're doing down here is we have some fruit type things that we're trying to grow down here so if you look right here, that is 
a fig. So it's a turkey fig. And I have another one up top. So, and somewhere down here, I also have some currants that Brian planted. So uh, I need to find those at some point and make sure they're fertilized and things like that. But like I said, I have trouble getting down here. This is the riskiest thing for me planting down here is that I'm gonna neglect it because it's kind of a pain to get down here. But hopefully if I bring you guys along, then I'll be more likely to come down here and work on these things. So that's the end of our garden tour today. I hope you enjoyed it and you were inspired a little bit to go home and grow some things for yourself. Even if you have terrible terrain or problem landscapes or just a lack of space, hopefully we've given you a few ideas that you can go do something yourself. All right, thanks, have a great day.